Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review this longer LK5 Pro. This printer has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400, and it costs $299. Generally, for a printer with this print volume and in this price range, we can just expect only the most basic features. However, surprisingly, this printer came with features such as a 4.3 inch touchscreen, three silent stepper drivers on the X, Y, and Z axes, and two extra support rods for the frame. I already have an LK4 Pro, which I did a lot of upgrades on, so it no longer looks like a longer. It seems that this LK5 Pro is just a pumped up version of the LK4 Pro. So I would just test this printer out, figure out how it works, and discuss the pros and cons of this $299 printer. I would like to thank ZBanks for sending me this machine to review. With that, let's open up the box and see what's inside. We have the x-axis, the base, the touchscreen, the gantry, the z-axis stepper motor, the filament holder, two support rods, the z-axis lead screw, and some tools. Before I start assembling it, I will remove the glass bed. First, I will attach the x-axis to the gantry. Just slide it in, flip it over, and install the lead screw. Connect the lead screw to the stepper motor, Tighten the coupler to secure the lead screw, and tighten the screws on the motor mount to secure it on the gantry. Now the gantry is assembled. We can put it on the base, align it with the screw holes on the base, move the printer to the edge of the table and tighten the screws underneath. Rotate it and do the same to the other side. Next, I will install the support rods. If the length of the rod is right, you can just tighten the screw at the top and bottom. Make sure it forms a perfect 90 degree angle. Do the same to the left side and tighten the screw at the top. For the bottom, the rod is a little bit too long, so we can just adjust the length by turning the nut and the screw. Okay, it should fit after a few turns. Tighten it and also make sure it forms a perfect 90 degree angle. Next, we will install the lead screw mount at the top, followed by the filament holder and the touch screen. For the Z-limit switch, there is a label with a line. Just align the bottom of the limit switch along this line and secure it with the T-nuts. We will now connect some cables, starting with the Z-limit switch, then the Z-stepper motor, the touch screen, the filament sensor, the extruder stepper motor, the X-stepper motor, the X-limit switch, and finally the heated bed. There is a cable strength relief at the bottom, and we can use a zip tie to fix the heated bed cable on it. Check the rubber wheels on all axes, starting with the x-axis. Make sure it doesn't spin freely, so that when you turn the wheel, all other wheels and the hot end plate should move together. If they are too loose or too tight, adjust the eccentric wheel underneath. Do the same to the y-axis. The bed should be able to move, Make sure it does not wobble when you apply some force and adjust the eccentric wheel if necessary. Do the same to both sides of the Z-axis. We can put the glass bed back and secure it with four binder clips. Remove the sticker from the power supply under the machine, and as I am in the US, I will flip it to 115 volts. We can now connect the power cord and turn on the machine. Let's home the printer and make sure everything is working. Go to Move, and select the yellow Home button to home the X and Y axis. Then, use the blue Home button to home the Z axis. In fact, if the X and Y axes aren't homed yet when you press the blue Home button, it will home all the axes together. When the Z-limit switch is triggered, we also want the nozzle to get close or just touch the bed. If the distance between them is too far, or the nozzle is pressing down on the bed too much, we may need to adjust the height of the Z-limit switch. Then, go to the leveling menu to level the bed. Starting with the bottom left corner, use the simple paper test to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the bed. A good distance is if the nozzle slightly scratches the paper. 
Do the same to all corners, and you may need to do two to three rounds to make sure every corner is perfect. We are now ready to start our first print. Let's go to the computer and set up this printer. Open Cura, click Add Printer, and select Longer 3D and then Longer LK5 Pro. Just leave all the default settings, and we will start with a 3D Benchy. The default profile is printing with a raft. This may be good for a single Z-axis printer, but I will just print it without the raft to show you what you can expect without it. Just change it to Skirt, and we will save this file to the microSD card. Let's go to the printer and print this 3D Benchy G-code file. As you can see, the bottom of the Benchy has a little layer bending issue. This is very common for all single Z-axis machines, especially one with a large build volume. Let me show you how this happens and how to fix it. When I try to turn the Z-stepper motor manually, you can see the left side of the gantry moves first and is then followed by the right side. As there is only one lead screw to move the gantry, for the first few layers, the right side of the machine is actually moving less than the left side. You can compare the distance between the gantry and the red line. Once it moves up a little more, they synchronize better, which is why you can't see too obvious bending for the rest of the print. In order to fix this, we can print a raft at the bottom so the bending will happen on the raft instead of the actual print. Or we can adjust the rubber wheel's tightness to make both sides move in a more synchronized manner. I will adjust the wheels and print another calibration cube. This time it looks better, but the bottom layers are still not as good as a printer with a dual Z axis. I will do a simple dual Z axis upgrade and compare the results later. But for now, I will do more test prints with this stock single Z axis setup. Let's print some complex models and see how this printer holds up. This model of the White House has a lot of details, and I will just use the same default profile to see how it prints. It turns out pretty nice. White filament generally hides the layers a little bit better than other colors, and I am quite happy with this print. Then, I will try to print the Colosseum. I will switch to the green PLA and see how it prints. The result also seems pretty nice. The overhanging and cooling of this single fan is working okay, and I can't see any cooling issues when it's printing with the default profile at 50 millimeters per second. Next, I will print a twisted tower. As you can see, this model has a lot of overhanging parts that may require supports, but since their angles are not that steep, I will just print it without any support and see how it looks. it seems the result is still pretty good. Despite the slight bending layers at the base, the overhanging parts, and the stairs, the tower still looks good. Finally, I will try some orange PETG filament to print this set of shelf brackets. I will change the infill to 100% as I want them to be as rigid as possible. I also set the printing temperature of PETG to 235 degrees for the nozzle and 85 degrees for the bed. It's going to take more than 16 hours, but I will increase the speed to 100 millimeters per second and leave the first layer as 20 millimeters per second. It seems it can now print almost six hours faster. So let's just go for it and see how it looks.
I think the parts still look pretty nice. As this is a functional part, I think the result is still okay when printing at 100mm per second. After doing a few test prints, I think I will do some simple upgrades on this machine. Unlike my heavily upgraded LK4 Pro, I would just do two upgrades on this that would help a lot with the print quality. The first upgrade is the dual C axis. I have another video showing how I did that on the LK4 Pro. You just need to buy a lead screw, a stepper motor, a coupler, some spacers, and 3D print their support plate and the motor mount. This upgrade costs less than $30 and I uploaded my design on Thingiverse. I will also put the link in the description. The second upgrade is the bed leveling sensor. This 3D Touch is a BL Touch clone that only costs $13 with free shipping. I did some tests on different bed leveling sensors and this 3D Touch is the cheapest with quite acceptable results. The manufacturer put the instructions on their website for wiring and how to set the Z offset. I also put the link under the description. I will reprint the 3D Benchy and compare the results with these two upgrades. As you can see, the difference is huge. The Benji with the stock setup doesn't look too bad without comparison, but the dual Z axis and the 3D touch make a huge improvement on the layers. The Benji now looks much nicer and looks just as good as the one printed by the Prusa MK3S Plus. I will reprint the calibration cube and see how much it improves. The improvement is huge. The layer lines are perfectly aligned and the cube is also just as good as the one printed by the Prusa. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. The overall build quality of the longer LK5 Pro is pretty good. The assembly is fairly easy, and the print quality is in line with other budget printers of the same class. It came with a slightly more affordable price and some extra features that you normally would not expect from this price range. Like the 4.3 inch touchscreen, which is from D-Win, and it's also very responsive. The screen menu and the location of the buttons are reasonable, and you can start using it right away without having to guess anything. It also came with silent stepper drivers on the X, Y, and Z axes, a filament sensor, and two extra adjustable rods to support the frame to improve stability when you print something really tall. The maximum temperature of the nozzle is 250 degrees Celsius, and it came with a better quality Bowden tube, which claimed to sustain up to 280 degrees Celsius, which is good enough for this setup. Now for the cons. The 8-bit processor on the motherboard is not that cool, but it won't affect print quality at all. My $599 CR Tennis Pro B2 and my $750 Prusa MK3S Plus both came with an 8-bit processor and they are working just fine. The stepper drivers for the X, Y, and Z axes are TMC2208 silent drivers, but the one for the extruder is not. It still makes some noise when extruding and retracting filament, but when you are actually printing, the noise from the cooling fans would be louder than the extruder. The touchscreen interface also does not support Z offset adjustment. This is inconvenient when you add a bed leveling sensor as you need to connect the printer to your computer and run Pronterface to send G-code to set the Z offset, which is not very user friendly. I hope the next touchscreen firmware update can include this feature. The rest of the hardware is similar to the CR10 and most budget 3D printers. They both come with basic components like a single gear extruder, one Z axis, no auto bed leveling, and one fan for part cooling. A dual blower fan kit is available for an extra $20, but at this $299 price, we can't expect it to include everything. In conclusion, if you are looking for a full gear 3D printer with a lot of features like a direct drive, a dual gear extruder, a high flow rate hot end, a dual Z axis, an auto bed leveling sensor, a PEI spring steel sheet, an AC heated bed, a Wi-Fi feature, and more, you may need to shop for something else in a higher price range. 
but if you think those features are not necessary for now and would like to get started with a budget-friendly, large-scale 3D printer without too high a price, this $299 longer LK5 Pro with an entry-level price tag does include some mid-range features like the large touchscreen, silent stepper drivers, and the frame support rods. It is still very competitive in terms of price and features. You can add more upgrades later when you have time and become familiar with this printer to make it even better. Besides the dual-C axis and bed leveling sensor, I've also added a LED light that connects directly to the 24-volt terminals of the power supply. I've also replaced the binder clips with these smaller bed clips to maximize the print volume of this printer. If you're interested in this printer, I put the link under the description. Currently, Longer is holding a giveaway promotion on their Facebook page, and I also included the link below. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. It's just a pumped up version of the LK... Wait, I skipped something. It's just a pumped up version of the LK4 Pro. Oh yeah. Three stepper drivers, three silent stepper drivers, but it's... It, it,